Hey everyone, welcome to another video here from the windowcleaningstore.com. Today it's part one of three of a series where we discuss the maintenance you would perform on a pure water fed multi stage system. And by multi stage system, I'm talking about any kind of water fed system that uses more than one type of filtering. You may have seen uh, one uh, stage DI, two stage DI, three stage DI. I'm not talking about those type of systems. I'm talking about case like here where we have some form of pre-filtering, carbon and sediment filter, RO membrane, as well as DI doing the final polish. So in part one, we're going to mainly be talking about the pre-filter and the post-filter, if you will. We'll save part two uh, in the next video to talk about the RO membrane, but for now we're going to be talking about the pre-filter and the DI, since these are the two filters you're going to be paying attention to most of the time. Now, whenever you buy a pure water fed system, you more than likely will have received some kind of package that has a, a manual inside, a filter wrench, TDS meter, that type of thing. And so we're going to use this as our little guide as to dealing with our pre filter and post filter. So I'm just going to put this aside over here. Now, in this particular system, it only needs one size of filter wrench. In, or, in order to open up the housings. Other systems may have different size pre-filter housing compared to the DI, so you might get two different size filter wrenches. So the biggest question is when do I change any of these filters? So the first filter that the water comes in contact with will always be this pre-filter enters in here. And it'll be some form of either a, a separate uh, sediment filter and a separate carbon filter, or in many cases like this, a combined sediment and carbon filter. Now, most of these are rated to, you know, in our industry, you know, to need to be changed out every six to eight weeks. Now, this is really depending on usage. I'd say if you're using this on a daily basis, definitely change it, at, you know, within two months or sooner. You may also find sometimes when you're using your system, that you suddenly, you know, one day you'll get a pressure drop, significant pressure drop. Could be that the last job that you're at had a lot of gunk going through their hose line, clogged up this carbon filter, and this is the filter that is protecting the RO. So this is something that you definitely want to take care of if it doesn't seem to be performing great. Now, its other function is to block the chlorine, again, protecting the RO. So what I'd suggest you to do is put on some kind of schedule. Uh, we all have... Uh, smartphones nowadays, you can put on a reminder schedule on when to change this out. And like I said, every couple months, couple months, six to eight weeks, and to open up this housing, take our filter wrench, and you'll go in a counterclockwise fashion. Just have to use it enough to loosen it up. Do the rest by hand. And inside, we have our carbon and sediment filter. This is a combination filter. Simply a case of taking the one, throwing it out, grabbing a new one, putting it back in. And whenever you tighten these things up after replacing the filter, you want to just tighten up by hand. You don't want to use the wrench. The main reason why we're using the wrench in the first place was because the system has been running under pressure and you may find that the housing is very hard to do by hand to untighten. So like I said, every six to eight weeks, this filter or sooner if you're cause, getting a, a sudden pressure drop. Now I just do want to make a note before we move on to the next stage of this video that if you just get a temporary pressure drop, it could simply be that the house or, or the property that you're working at has low water pressure. So don't always jump to this conclusion, but if it's not a case of the customer's source water being a low pressure, more than likely it's this filter has been clogged up. Now the last filter on the system is always going to be DI. The RO membrane usually takes care of 95% or better of taking out the impurities, that is the minerals uh, in the water that can cause spotting, but the DI will do that final polish, taking it that rest of the way, the final 5%. And the way you know it's time to change this filter is, as I mentioned, you would have received in your package some form of TDS water meter. 
So before you use a system at the beginning of the day, you want to take a sampling coming out of the output of the DI canister. And that sampling should be anywhere between 0 to 10 parts per million. If you're at 10 or higher, it is time to replace the DI. And in most instances, it's simply a case of just opening up the housing, taking the cartridge out, unscrewing the cartridge lid, dumping out the old resin, and scooping new. So I'm just going to show you a case here. Again, to loosen, it's counterclockwise. In this particular case, we've got a 2 inch by 20 inch cartridge. Some systems, you may see it 4 inch by 20 inch. And also very common is 4 inch by 10 inch. So in this particular case here, we have a cap on the bottom. So we'd unscrew that. And like I say, you just dump out the old resin, scoop in the new. Now I talked about taking a TDS reading out of the DI. And it's very important that this is the deciding factor of when to change a DI. I've seen a lot of discussion online where somebody will say, oh, look at the color of my DI. It's all dirty now. It doesn't matter what the DI looks like. Uh, almost nobody is using color-changing resin these days. Resin will always pretty much be the same color as what it was when it was first put in there. It's the TDS reading that's going up that determines that the DI that's inside here is exhausted and can no longer perform. And also I want to talk about uh, the fact that you're using mixed bed resin and in this particular case, in this one here, they use a mixture of a gold and a black colored resin. The black is one form of the mixed bed and the gold is the other. And sometimes throughout the use of the system, the black beads will have a tendency to just kind of cling together and hang out in one spot and the gold will be somewhere else and they all like to group together. So over time, you may see black over here, gold over here. If you have that kind of resin, it hasn't gone bad, it hasn't gone dirty. It's just, they're just changing their position within the canister, and that is it. Anyone tells you that your, your DI is dirty, whatever, they, they don't know what they're talking about, go by your TDS reading, okay? I'd also like to mention that when you are getting high TDS, it's not going to be your pre-filtering. I've known some people, they say, well, I've changed this four or five times and the, and the TDS still won't go down. Well, this is not the filter. This is the one here, the DI. And again, just like the carbon filter, when you're putting this back on, it's just hand tightening. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it straight. Okay, there we go. We caught the threads. Just to hand tighten, that is it. One last thing I want to talk to you about on both your pre and post filters is that, well, actually, I'm going to use this as an example. Very important that your filters and housings remain a nice tight seal. Now, you'll notice on the top of this filter here, it's got a black rubber ring. Well, it also has one on the bottom. On the DI, also has one on the top. And you might see a, a ring impression here. That impression is a result of this pushing up on the output side inside the housing there. It's making a good seal. Sometimes, if you've got a system um, and you open this up, you might see that that impression is kind of off to one side. That means when you've been tightening up your housing after changing up the filter, maybe this has been sitting off to one side too much. Very rarely see this on a, on a pre-filter, but I have seen it a couple of times on a DI filter where, you know, they've been changing it on a hill, so the, the cartridge actually ends up sitting on an angle. Make sure that these things are straight, that way you have a nice good contact, there's no cross-contamination. The other thing too is inside the housing, you'll see that there's a black ring. That is an O-ring. I've seen people who will they'll take out their filter and then they'll just dump out the water there, not realizing that, whoop, there goes the O-ring. 
Then they change their filter, they hook everything up, and then this thing is leaking like crazy. I actually had that happen a few weeks ago. Customer says, there's nothing, you know, I'm not getting any, hardly any pressure, the, the housings are leaking. And that was simply the case. He thought he had to empty out the housings every time he finished using the system, and he would just dump it out. And of course, he puts everything back together. It's not working right. Just be observant. Whenever you take these things apart, look at how they are when you first take them apart. Take a picture if you have to. Like We all have cameras on our smartphones. Take a picture. This is what it should look like when I put it back. And if it doesn't, well, what did you do wrong? So that's it. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the RO because when to do any kind of maintenance or replacement on the RO, it's a bit of a mystery. A lot of people don't really understand how an RO performs and when it's time to change that versus when it's time to change the DI or the pre-filtering. Anyway, thanks for watching. The windowcleaningstore.com is trying to do whatever it can to help you um, maintain your systems. Doesn't matter if you bought a system for, uh, from us or from any of the other reputable uh, sources out there. They all pretty much work the same. And one last point on that. When I say they all pretty much work the same is because there's maybe a, a misconception out there that the window cleaning industry has invented these systems. They have. They, every company has their own style of setup, uh, you know, different types of carts, labeling, uh, valves, whatever system, whatever. But basically, we are borrowing technology from the pure water industry Nothing to do with window cleaning. We we're just borrowing that technology and putting it on a cart and calling it a window cleaning system. Anyway, the phone's going. I got to go. Probably another sale. Thanks for watching the windowcleaningstore.com. Bye for now.